Hello and welcome to another Barb Stamps video. Today I want to show you how to make this cool window diorama card with a fabulous dragonfly in there. And we've got some 3D wing action going on, which is pretty dang cool. So let's just gather our supplies and get this made. I'm going to start out with a couple pieces of cardstock. These are quarter sheets, which means they measure five and a half by four and a quarter. I've got two of them. One is the Smoky Slate, one is the Dapper Denim. I'm also going to be using the Dragonfly Dreams uh, stamp set along with the detailed Dragonfly Thinlet dies. And we're going to use the Stitched Shapes Framelits and the Layering Squares Framelits. So, first things first. We need to die cut our opening in this card, uh, but to do that, I need to put some score lines in so I know where the center of the card is. I'm going to bring in our Simply Scored tool, and both of these pieces of cardstock are going to be scored at basically a half inch and one inch, four and a half and five. But I find it easier if I just do both of my scoring at this back end here because it's a little difficult to get in there sometimes. So I just put my uh, little place markers at four and a half and five and I just score the pieces and then I just rotate them. I find that to be just a little bit easier for myself and I am using the narrow ball, the small bald end of the stylus here rather than the thick one. I'm using the little one so I can get a nice score line. All right, let's put this away. So I have my two pieces here. This is the one that I'm going to die cut, uh, but while I'm at it and doing some die cutting, I'm also going to cut a, a large stitched circle out of this piece of white. So this is the largest circle in the stitched shapes framelits. I also need to cut a set of dragonfly wings, and I'm going to use a scrap of whisper white here. So here's my stamp. It's the large dragonfly. I've mounted it on a block E. And I do want to give you a little tip about mounting stamps uh, for die cutting. Um, if I was just to pull this stamp off the sheet and I just sort of stuff it on there, the way I laid it on my block, it might not cut properly. I use my silicone mat and I just take my stamp and I lay it, you know, stamping side down after I've pulled it off my sheet to let it regain its shape. And then after that's happened, then I just take my block, come over the top, and put my stamp on the block that way. Okay, so there is one of my dragonflies. The other one I'm just going to stamp on this piece here. And then that one I'll die cut with the circle. Give that a good press. Make sure we get a good image. Perfect. So I'm going to die cut this, this and this. Here's my big shot. I've got my precision base plate, my thin die adapter, and my big shot platform all lined up here. And I'm going to run a couple of these things through at a time just to save some time. So, and actually this, I'm just going to tear that off because I don't need all of that. All I really need are the wings. So we'll just lay the die over that, and you can see how it's just a perfect, perfect fit. Yay! Bring in our gray panel here, and I don't know if you can see the score lines that I made with the scoring tool. This is my number nine die, and I've numbered all mine, starting from the smallest square shape. I've just got them all numbered. So my smallest one is one, two, all the way up through, I believe it's nine. And then I have my scallop ones on this side, and I've done the same thing. I've just numbered them. I also have a downloadable form that you can print off um, on my blog, and it'll give you all the measurements of all these. So I'm just going to center this. I want it a little bit up higher. You can see my opening is higher. I have a lot more space down here at the bottom, so I'm going to put my die close to the top there. Got my dragonfly on. Put my cutting mat on there and then we'll just run this through. Okay, so I have my dragonfly wings and I have one hole cut. I'm going to bring in another piece of dapper denim. Got my largest scallops, scallop square framelit on the platform. Bring in my dragonfly and I'm going to lay my largest stitched circle framelit over the top of this thing. And uh, some of the wing is going to get cut off, but that's fine. 
And my circle. Let's press that out. Got that. The last thing I need to do is to take this piece and die cut a window in it because I'm looking to actually make a frame to go around the window. So I need to cut the hole out of that. So I'm going to use the number eight square and I'm just going to line it up on my die cut here. I'm just eyeballing it to make sure that it's even around all sides. Cutting mat in here. Okay, that we don't need. This we do. Okay, so we've got our circle dragonfly, or dragonfly for the wings. We've got our little frame. We've got our window, and we've got our back piece. So now we can just kind of throw all this stuff together. First thing I'm gonna do is glue this down to the back side. And I'm gonna use just some liquid glue here. And I want it centered from side to side, but I want it down a little bit. I don't want it completely in the middle because the front frame is not completely in the middle. And I want it a little bit offset so that the dragonfly appears to be, you know, flying. Okay, and we're going to add the frame to this piece. So this is actually going to be the front. So I'm just putting a little tiny bit of glue around the window opening here. And then we'll just add the frame. Actually, if I turn it over, I'll be able to see if it's centered better. So we'll do that. Uh, then we need to cut off a little bit of the dragonfly's body here. Get my scissors. So I actually only need this much. I'm just going to cut his body off right at the bottom of the wings here. Get rid of that. And I also don't need his head, so goodbye head. So I'm just going to kind of cut off right up about there. Okay, so we've got those pieces. And this, I'm just going to add a glue dot to the back of his body here. And you can see I used a scrap. That's the good thing about scraps. You can always use them. And I'm just going to place the wings exactly over where, you know, they should be. Press that down. And then I want to lift the wing up on both sides. So I'm going to stick my finger in the way so that it only goes up so far. And that way, when I actually get the card finished, you'll be able to have that dimension there. I also want to add some sequins to this little guy. So I've got my row of uh, sequin trim here, and I'm just going to pull three sequins off of the strings. And I'm going to add three dots of glue. And then I will put my sequins on. I've got this little uh, tool here that I've made. It's a dowel. This is another tip for you. This is a dowel. Just you can actually, it's a um, a shish kebab stick where you make kebabs. It's a kebab stick. You can get them in the grocery store in the um, oh like the section where the pots and pans and stuff are. So anyway, um, and then I've just got some uh, poster putty tacky stuff on the end of that, which is going to help me pick up these little guys. So I can just press my stick onto the sequin and it just picks it right up for me so it's brilliant. Oh, I got a little too much glue there so we're going to take some off and get that added on. Okay so now the front I want to stamp a little design here on the bottom and I actually should have done that first note to self do that before but with the design that we're going to use it's not going to matter. So we're using this image it also comes in the stamp set it's just uh, some random blobs of circles and we're going to use our smoky slate ink here and so I'm just going to ink that up and since I can see through it oh goodness this is not smoky slate this is basic gray hold please while I clean my stamp okay that's a redo smoky slate this is what I'm looking for so I'm just going to ink up the bottom of those circles and I can see through the stamp so I can see where I'm going to place it so that I'm not actually going to get it up there on top of my frame. So let's do that. So there we have it. Okay, so now we need to fold this guy. So the top, the first set of score lines are going to be folded away from you. Okay. So fold those away from you. And you do want to make them a little crisp. Fold there. So fold that one away from me. 
And then this other one, we're going to fold back like on itself. So we're going to make kind of a Z uh, type fold here. Okay, so this is what we have. We have like a little zigzag fold. And now the back, we're going to fold the first score line up towards us. Okay. And then this one will go back on itself to create that Z. So this one's going to go over the image, and then this one's going to come back. Okay. And then we can just glue these two panels together. So I like to use liquid glue again, um, just because that way, as I'm putting them together, I have a little more time to wiggle them around than I would if I was to use a more permanent type of adhesive like Snail or Fast Fuse, even the Terra Tape adhesive. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up these two edges. Get those lined up, top, bottom, sides. Give that a nice press. Same thing on this end, uh, top, bottom, and the side. And you can see how with that liquid glue, I'm able to just kind of wiggle that stuff around until I get it where I want it. And it just works brilliantly for this type of project. Okay, so now you can see it's going to still fold flat for mailing, but yet when the person gets it, they can open it up and they can stand it on their desk and they're just going to love it and they're going to love you for sending it to them. Final thing we need to do is create the greeting. Now I want my basic gray. And I'm going to use the greeting that says, what does it say? You sure know how to make someone happy. I've got just uh, about a 7 8 by 4 inch strip of Whisper White here. Get that stamped on. Okay. And then I'm going to use my triple banner punch to slice the end off of this thing. And I'm going to put it into the punch upside down and slide it in. That way, I can see if I'm going to be cutting off any of my words. See? Perfect. I'm also going to trim a little bit off the edge here because I don't need quite that much. So we'll just trim that off. Then we're going to add a... Well, first of all, we're going to give this a little bit of a bone folding here. So got the mess cleaned up. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of... Oh, I'm going to fold this a little bit. So right in the middle... I'm bringing the bone folder so I have a little look like this. This end, I'm going to go like that. And then the banner end, I'm going to go like this. So I end up having, uh, it's a little bit wonky, so it's not perfectly flat. And then I'm only going to put glue dots on the very bottom. So I'm going to put one down here in the bottom corner. See, I've got my glue dot there. And then I'm going to put one at this banner here. So I have a glue dot here and a glue dot here near the bottom. So when I put this on, it's going to be kind of overlapping the window. So I mean, it's going to be in the window. That's why I didn't want a glue dot um, up above. I just want one of the two at the bottoms. So there it is. That's our card. Yay! And like I said, it does fold flat for mailing. You just fold that down. And then when the person gets it, then they can just stand it up on their desk. And they can see those awesome, awesome 3D dragonfly wings in there. It's just so very cool. All right, I guess that's it for this card. Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, stamping with me today. If you need any supplies to create your own dragonfly cards, such as the detailed dragonfly bundle, you can get them in my store at shoppingwithbarb.com. Um, if you learned anything new today, any tips or, trips you, tips or tricks that you found helpful, give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It lets me know you like what I'm doing, and I'll continue to make this kind of content for you guys. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the next video.